Hi, I'm Eugene from Google Brain Tokyo. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about our latest work on neural evolution of self-interpretable agents. This is a joint work with my colleagues Zhong Guan and David Ha. Before talking about our work in this paper, I'd like to first introduce you to a concept called inattentional blindness. Inattentional blindness is a psychological phenomenon that causes one to miss things in plain sight. And to demonstrate this phenomenon, as you can see from the image caption on this slide, psychologists showed people a video and asked the viewers to count how many times white-shirted players passed the ball. After about 30 seconds in the video, a woman in a gorilla suit walked into the scene and was quite noticeable. However, although most viewers were able to count the passes correctly, when asked if they saw the gorilla, half of them said they did not. This suggests that we humans have selective attention. Especially when we are engaged in effort-demanding tasks, we tend to focus on only the part that are critical to the task and are temporarily blind to irrelevant details. So, motivated by this mechanism of selective attention, uh, we study the properties of agents that perceive the world through the lens of an attention bottleneck. You can see some example episodes of our agent playing two games, car racing and doom takeover on this slide. We find that uh, by constraining access to only a small fraction of the visual input, we were able to train agents that can not only solve challenging vision-based tasks, but also possess several good properties. Uh, I will describe the results and the properties in detail shortly. So what does this agent look like? The architecture of our attention agent is very simple, and the data processing flow can be separated into three steps, input transformation, patch selection, and finally, action generation. Our attention agent observes a single RGB image at each time step. So in the input transformation step, it performs some basic image processing on the input, segments it into a batch of patches, and reshapes the data for the downstream modules. Then in the second step, we use a modified self-attention module to select a subset of the patches to attend to. Uh, I'll give the details of this module later, but I want to briefly mention that self-attention is one type of artificial attention. Uh, it appeared in the paper, attention is all you need, and was used for language translation task. Uh, in the attention agent, the patch selection step outputs a vector that represents the patch's importance and based on which the agent assigns its attention. Finally, in the action generation step, attention agent picks the K image patches of the highest importance and discards the rest. It then makes control decisions solely on these selected patches, hence mimicking the selective attention mechanism. Uh, in the next few slides, uh, I'll talk about the details of each of these steps. The operations involved in the image transformation step are mostly straightforward. As a net effect, this step organizes a single RGB image into a batch of N flattened image patches, where N, the number of patches, depends on the image segmentation method. In this paper, we use a simple 2D sliding window, which is identical to how a convolutional layer sweeps over an input image. In the patch selection step, as I mentioned earlier, we rely on the modified self-attention module that generates an attention matrix. And if we sum along the columns of this matrix, we get a vector that represents the patch's importance. As we will see later, this module can easily be trained using neural evolution, but not with gradient descent. In this sense, we simply let evolution decide which patches are more important. Let me explain to you now how our modified self-attention works. Um, in an extremely simplified version, self-attention can be summarized by the two equations on the screen, where the module will first project the input data x into two components called keys and queries. It then calculates the outer product of them to get a Gramian matrix. After some scaling and a nonlinear operation, we get an m by n attention matrix. Self-attention will then calculate a weighted sum of the input data and the attention matrix and regards the result y as its output. In attention agent, 
we discarded the output Y and used attention matrix A only. The softmax operation in equation 1 is applied along each row, so each row sums up to 1. Therefore, the attention matrix can be regarded as the result of votings between the n patches, where each patch distributes a total of one vote to others, where it considers important. In this way, if we sum along the columns and reduce the attention matrix into a vector, the result is a patch importance vector. With this patch importance vector, we are ready to generate the action corresponding to the input image. In this step, attention agent picks the K patches of the highest importance values and extract features from them. The rest patches are discarded without further processing. In this fashion, we create an information bottleneck that forces the agent to attend to a patch only if it helps with the task. While there are many ways we can process the images, and we have suggested a few in our paper, in our experiments for simplicity, our feature consists of only the center positions of each patch. Notice that this function makes use of the spatial information but it does not utilize the content information in the patches at all. Lastly, to capture timely dependent information in the input sequence, we use an LSTM as our controller in Attention Agent. Attention Agent needs to sort and prune the patch importance vector in this step. These operations are not gradient friendly, and thus it is not straightforward to apply backpropagation to train the agent. Furthermore, Restricting to gradient-based learning methods can prohibit the adoption of learnable feature extraction functions that may consist of discrete operations or need to produce discrete features. We therefore turn to evolution algorithms to train our agent end-to-end. -end. It is possible to train our agent using any evolution strategy or genetic algorithms. In this paper, we use CMAES. CMAES is a powerful black box optimization algorithm. However, due to its non trivial cost for computing a full covariance matrix for the parameters at each time step, it is rarely applied to problems in high dimensional space, such as the tasks dealing with visual inputs. Self attention in attention agent allows it to generate weights that are dynamic and dependent on the input. As a result, it has significantly fewer learnable weights compared to conventional methods. As we will see later, our agent needs only a few thousand trainable parameters, and we are therefore able to adopt CMAES in our experiments. In this respect, self-attention resembles indirect encoding, and in the next slide, I'll talk more about the relationship. Indirect encoding methods represent the weights of a neural network called the phenotype, with a smaller set of genotype parameters. How a genotype encodes a larger solution space is defined by the indirect encoding algorithm. For example, on the left, we present examples of fully connected networks from HyperNet, where the weights of each connection is a function of its location within the network. In the paper, we have discussed in great detail many similarities and the connections between self-attention and indirect encoding. For example, self-attention constructs the n by n attention matrix from the much smaller, smaller keys and queries factors. Moreover, the attention matrix can be viewed as adaptive weights that are dependent on the input. This is similar to the recurrent neural networks in hypernetworks, which is a form of dynamic indirect encoding, and it's shown on the right. To demonstrate that attention agent is able to solve vision-based tasks and to study its properties, we evaluate the agent in two challenging tasks with visual inputs, car racing and a doom takeover. The leftmost column in the figure gives snapshots of the two environments. To study how the self-attention information bottleneck affects the agent's ability to generalize to unseen environments, we also evaluate our agent in the modified car racing and doom takeover environments without retraining. Sample images of the modified environments are given on the right. We show the detailed neural network architecture of our attention agent on the screen. Operations with learnable weights are highlighted in green. 
At first impression, it seems these operations are only a small fraction of the entire network. Actually, attention agent indeed has significantly fewer learnable parameters than conventional methods. To give a quantitative comparison, we give the number of learnable parameters from other methods, which have also reported the scores on car racing or doom take cover. We will take these methods at baselines in our experiments. Our agent has less than 4,000 parameters, while conventional methods have hundreds of thousands or millions of weights. Attention agent is thus at least a hundred times parameter efficient, and this is the first good property brought by the self-attention information bottleneck. On this slide, we show experiment results together with scores from baseline methods in the table. We report the average score over 100 consecutive tests with standard deviations. For reference, the required scores above which the tasks are considered solved are also included. As a summary of the results, attention agent is not only able to solve both tasks, it also outperformed the baseline methods. From the learning curves at the bottom, attention agent is able to reach the required score within 1,000 training iterations, and when more training budgets are given, it stably achieves higher scores. We didn't tune the hyperparameters of the network, or CMAES, and you can find the detailed experimental settings in the paper. To give a qualitative feeling of how the agent does in the two tasks, we show some annotated animations on this slide. Of the three columns, the leftmost gives the scaled input image to the agent. Then in the middle, we have emphasized the K most important patches selected by the agent at each step with the white patches, the opacity of which grows with the patches' importance. In our experiments, K is 10. These white patches indicate what the agent is attending to, and most of them are consistent with human's intuition. For example, in car racing, the agent's attention is on the border of the road, but shifts its focus to the turns before the car needs to change its heading direction. Notice that the attentions are mostly on the left side of the road, and this makes sense from a statistical point of view, considering that the racing lane forms a closed loop and the car is always running in the counterclockwise direction. In Doom Take Cover, the agent is able to focus its attention on fireballs. When the agent is near the corner of the room, it is also able to detect the wall and change its dodging strategy instead of stuck into the dead end. Notice the agent also distributes its attention on the panel at the bottom, especially on the profile photo in the middle. We suspect this is because the controller is using patch positions as its input, and it learned to use these points as anchors to estimate its distances to the fireballs. Finally, in the rightmost column, we show the patches that the controller sees and upon which makes decisions. With this visualization, we conclude that attention agent possesses interpretability in terms of how a decision is made in the pixel space. And this is a byproduct from the self-attention information bottleneck. On this slide, I'll discuss the results of generalization tests. Take driving for example. Once learned how to, we humans can drive on both sunny and rainy days, in different cars, or on different roads in spite of never being there before. This generalization capability may seem trivial to us, but we are still falling short in training agents to do so. An agent's ability to generalize to states other than those encountered during training is thus of extreme importance. In this vein, we trained attention agents and the baseline methods in the original car racing and doom takeover tasks, but test them in the modified environments without retraining or fine-tuning. As you can see on the slide, the modifications are minor. They do not change the core mission or cause critical information loss. It is thus reasonable to expect agents to give similar performance as they did in the training environments. As a summary of this test, attention agent generalizes well to all modifications while the baselines fail. If you look at the animation on the screen, you'll notice the consistency 
between the agent's attention locations in the modified environments and those in the original task. Even though in some frames, attention agent seemed to get distracted, it was able to pull its attention back when task critical object appeared. Please refer to the paper for more quantitative results. At this point, we conclude that attention agent learned to generalize better simply by not seeing things that are ir irrelevant to the task. While the method presented so far is able to cope with various out-of-domain modifications of the environment, there are limitations to this approach, and much more work needs to be done to further enhance the generalization capabilities. For instance, much of the extra generalization capability is due to attending to the right thing rather than from logical reasoning. As is demonstrated by the animation on the left, if we modify the environment by adding a parallel lane next to the true lane, the agent attends to the other lane and drives there instead. Also, we want to highlight that the self-attention visual module does not generalize to cases where dramatic background changes are involved. For example, we modify the background of the car racing environment and replace the green grass background with a YouTube video in the animation on the right. In this case, the agent trained in the original environment fails to generalize. When we take this one step further and replace the background with pure uniform noise, we observe that the agent's attention module breaks down entirely and attends only to random patches of noise rather than to the road-related patches. When we train an agent from scratch in this noisy background environment, it still manages to get around the track, although the performance is only mediocre. Interestingly, the self-attention module still attends only to the noise rather than to the road, but it appears that the controller actually learned a policy to avoid such locations. These results suggest that the simplistic choices we made in designing the agent such as to only use the patch locations rather than their contents, may not be adequate for more complicated tasks. As is true for all scientific research, this paper is inspired and based on numerous pioneering works in various fields. Due to space constraints, we can only list a few here. Please refer to the paper for a detailed description of relevant works. So, to summarize this work, we demonstrated that self-attention is a powerful module for creating RL agents that is capable of solving challenging vision-based tasks. With the self-attention information bottleneck, the agent can have several good properties, among which the major ones are having significantly fewer learnable weights, being interpretable in the pixel space, and the agent generalizes better than conventional methods. With that being said, our agent is nowhere close to the generalization capabilities of humans. The simplistic design choices we made in this paper is not sufficient to solve more complicated tasks. How we can learn more meaningful features and perhaps even extract symbolic information from the visual input will be an exciting future direction. In this work, we find a neural evolution to be a powerful toolbox for training agents, yet its adoption in RL is limited. We expect more neural evolution trained agents in the future, and it would be exciting to see how these agents would perform in vision-based tasks that are currently dominated by deep RL algorithms in the existing literature. We also establish the connections between indirect encoding methods and self-attention. Specifically, we show that self-attention can be viewed as a form of indirect encoding, Another interesting direction for future works is therefore to explore other forms of indirect encoding bottlenecks that, when combined with neural evolution, can produce parameter-efficient RL agents that exhibit interesting innate behaviors. Okay, finally, we open source the code for reproducing all the experiments in the paper. In addition, we also release car racing extension, a collection of modified car racing environments to facilitate future researches in agent generalization. For more information about this work, as well as to use the code, please visit the link at the bottom of the slide.